Welcome to Hillsborough Aviation. So you've decided to start your helicopter flight training process. Just like any other credible flight school, Hillsborough Aviation holds safety to the highest standards. Before any flight, a pre-flight inspection must be done on the helicopter to ensure safer flight. A step-by-step -step systematic process is put in place to help us ensure that no steps are overlooked in the process. On board each aircraft, a checklist will be available. Use and follow this checklist step by step and also use it to follow along with the video in the pre-flight of the Robinson R-22 helicopter. As you approach the aircraft, do a quick visual inspection of the surrounding area. It's a good idea to bring along an empty fuel container and some extra oil. Place these items out of the way so that you don't trip over them. Continue your inspection by looking around the helicopter just to ensure that everything is in its place. Next, retrieve the checklist from inside the cabin on the pilot's side in the pocket in front of his seat. The checklist is broken into several different sections to make it easy to follow step by step. Be sure to note that there is more on the back side. Let's begin with the first section. First on the list, you must check the documentation of the aircraft. Make sure that the aircraft has the airworthiness certificate, the FAA registration, and state registration on board. Return the documents to the sleeve and secure them in place. You also want to make sure that the aircraft has its operator's manual on board, which also includes the weight and balance sheets inside. Pull the clutch circuit breaker, easily identified by the red ring. Turn on master power, engage the clutch and navigation lights, and ensure that all of the gauges are working as they're supposed to. Also ensure that the oil pressure alternator and governor lights are working. Ensure that the strobe light on the tail boom is working. You'll have a green position light on the right hand side and a red position light on the left. You'll also have a white position light on the tail. Next, let's check the landing lights. Once you verify that they work, go ahead and turn them off again as they drain a lot of battery power. To test the warning lights, open the cowl door on the side of the aircraft. The test buttons inside correspond to warning lights inside the cockpit. You want to make sure that you press each one and that the light will come on as indicated. The low fuel test switch must be pressed and held for the test light to come on. Once all those have been tested, turn off your navigation lights, disengage the clutch, turn off master power. Make sure that you push the clutch circuit breaker back in. Next, let's check the cowl door area. First, let's check the pitot tube. We also check the static source tube as well. That is located inside the cowl door. Open the doors and inspect the static source. It's easily identifiable by the label static on the line. Next, inspect the auxiliary fuel tank. Check for any leaks and make sure that everything is in place. Check to make sure that the main rotor push and pull tube and mixture assembly is all intact and there are no cracks. Now inspect the main gearbox. Check to make sure that the oil is at the appropriate level and that the teletemp indicator is not showing any more than two black squares. Also ensure that the wiring for the chip detector is intact. Next check the main gearbox attachment bolts and look for torque stripe on the bolts and thread. Check the rotor brake for proper operation you can hear an audible click as the rotor brake is pulled. Check the upper frame for integrity. Make sure there's no cracks, especially in any of the welded areas. You also want to check the forward and mid flex couplings. Check to make sure that there is no cracks in the couplings and that the nuts are tight.
Also, ensure to check the flanges themselves to make sure that there are no cracks or damage to those as well. Next, check the upper sheath bearing for excessive looseness. Also, check the teletim to ensure that it's within normal parameters with no more than two black squares. Check to make sure the bearing is not leaking. An indication of a leaking bearing would be oil or grease splattered on the cowl door. Check the V-belt condition and slack, and check that the sprag clutch moves freely. Check that the tail rotor control rod and bell crank move without interference. Inspect all fasteners and wiring harnesses and ensure that the cowl door is properly closed. Let's move on to the right side of the engine area. Inspect the air ducts and ensure that they are secure and clear. Inspect the oil cooler. Inspect the oil lines, making sure there's no leaks or chafing. Inspect the left magneto, make sure that it's tight. Inspect the starter, make sure there's no excessive wear on the teeth. Inspect the fan scroll, ensure there are no cracks in the housing. Inspect the cooling fan nut, make sure that the pin is lined up with the marks. And inspect the cooling fan, making sure there are no cracks anywhere. Let's move on to the tail section. First inspect the frame and the cone attachment. Check both attachment bolts on the right side and make sure that they are tight. Inspect the surface of the entire tail boom for any dents or scratches as it could cause structural weakness. Check that each rivet is secure by running your hands along the body of the tail boom. Also ensure that the antenna is secure. Also, inspect the tail fin to ensure that everything is intact. Turn the checklist over and continue with the tail gearbox inspection. First check that oil is visible in the sight gauge. Check that safety wire is properly installed and the chip detector wiring is secure. Check the gearbox teletemp for normal parameters. Inspect the tail blades to ensure that they are clean and are not damaged or cracked. Inspect the teeter bearing, swash plate, and bell cranks for no excessive looseness. Also, check to make sure that all bolts are secure. Now inspect the left side of the tail boom, just like you did on the right side. Ensuring that all rivets are secure. Check that the three attachment bolts on the left side are nice and tight. Check that the clutch actuator jam nuts and the wiring harnesses are secure. Let's move on to the left side of the engine. First we'll check the teletemp on the lower sheave bearing. Make sure that it is within parameters. Check that the alternator is secure and that the belt has proper tension on it. Inspect the exhaust system and the engine sheet metal and cracks. Ensure that the right magneto is tight. Check the engine oil level. It should read at least 5 quarts as indicated by the markings on the dipstick. Check for proper operation of the throttle linkage and the correlator. Next, we take fuel samples to ensure that no contaminants are present in any of the fuel tanks. Let's check the main tank first. Check that the fuel is blue in color and there are no contaminants in the sample. Water contamination will appear as small bubbles at the bottom of the sample. We must also take samples from the gas collator 
below the airframe, and from the auxiliary fuel tank. Ensure that you dispose of the fuel samples in a proper receptacle. Now let's inspect the main rotor system. Make sure that you only use the provided stepping area to climb up on the aircraft. Check the condition and tightness of all blade bolts and main hinge bolts. Inspect all jam nuts and ensure that safety wire is in all places where is necessary. Inspect all rod ends for no excessive looseness. Now let's have a look at the blades. It's very important that you never pull down on a blade, but rather push up on the opposing blade. Inspect the entire length of the blade, ensuring that it is clean and there is no damage or cracks. Inspect the other blade in the same manner, again pushing up on the opposing blade rather than pulling down on the blade to be inspected. When you are finished inspecting, place the blades in a level position. Now let's finish the checklist and look at the final area, the fuselage and miscellaneous items. This wooden fuel stick has been specially designed to measure the amount of fuel in the main tank and the auxiliary tank. Open the cap and insert the fuel stick into the tank. The wet portion of the stick will indicate how much fuel is remaining in the tank. The same stick has markings for the main fuel tank on the opposite side. Remove the main fuel cap, insert the stick, and measure the amount of fuel in the main tank. Again, the wet portion of the stick will indicate how much fuel is in the tank. It is very important that you remember to replace the fuel cap on both the auxiliary and the main tanks. Next, check the condition of both seat belts. and make sure that the left removable controls are secure. Inspect the condition of the left door and ensure that the door hinge safety pins are both installed. Inspect the landing gear, making sure that all bolts are secure and check the skid shoes for no excessive wear. Check the condition and cleanliness of the windshield and the trim strings. Make sure the fresh air vent is clear and intact. Now check the right door. Ensure that it latches securely and that the door hinge safety pins are both installed. Lastly, inspect the lower fuselage to ensure there is no damage. Return the checklist to its location in the pocket in front of the pilot's seat. Be sure to take care of your hazardous materials in a proper manner.